Yes, I know some of you, some of you that don't know me, like Coach Bill said, my name is Patrick Ward, I'm a certified strength and conditioning specialist, uh, licensed massage therapist, and uh, I also have my master's degree in exercise science, and I own a company called Optimum Sports Performance. We're located right here in the valley, and we work on performance-based strength and conditioning programs and um, corrective soft tissue modalities for uh, athletes everywhere from youth and high school to recreational, professional, amateur, college, as well as general population clients who are kind of interested in seeing what performance-based strength and conditioning is all about, because chances are uh, a lot of things that we're doing are really different than what you're going to get when you go down the street to the local gym and, and hire a personal trainer. Um, I've worked with a lot of runners over the years, um, and I've been working with Coach Bill and, and the Aztec group for maybe you know, two and a half, three years, ever since I moved out here pretty much. Um, just kind of lending my time. You may have seen me at races with my, my table up, helping people out with soft tissue work, showing them stretches, corrective exercises, kind of take care of the aches and pains they may have, um, as well as hanging out with Coach Bill and doing gait analysis and, you know, watching how people run and giving them tips on that. Um, so I'm happy to speak here a little bit about resistance training for runners. Um, just strength training is something that is really important to me. I, I enjoy talking about it a lot, and I think for runners it's a little bit uh, misunderstood. And although people are starting to come around, um, it's starting to get published a little bit more in the magazines if you pick up Runner's World, things like that, it's still a little bit of misinformation out there. So we're going to go over a couple reasons why endurance athletes primarily don't strength train and some of the reasons why that may be a big limiting limiting factor in their program. Uh, you know, resistance training can be the missing link to a great program, and I think it has to fit in with your running program, but on top of that, it's great for injury prevention and performance enhancement. I know everybody wants to come out and, and say, what can I do to get faster? How do I get better? How do I increase my performance? Um, but the real goal is injury prevention. If, if you can't prevent injury or if you're injured, you can't perform, and then obviously there's nothing to enhance upon. Um, you know, I had a client last year uh, come to me, and he had about 14 weeks until the uh, San Francisco half marathon. And he run a couple of marathons and several half marathons, and he said, you know, I just want to see see what I can do and, and improve. And he had done some strength training in the past, um, but it was kind of misguided stuff. And he had gone to the gym and done some, you know, leg training, maybe high weights and machine-based stuff, and. It was kind of misguided, so I said, okay, well, we've got 14 weeks, and we went through our assessment, we put together the program, and we trained two times a week, strength training-wise, for 14 weeks, and then he had his running program that I gave him. And he went out, and he ran the San Francisco Marathon, and he came back, and he said, how was it? He said, I, I got seven-minute PR. I said, wow. I mean, I'm not going to guarantee that everybody in this room is going to get seven-minute PR if you start strength training, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, that's a pretty significant result. But, you know, the bottom line is that once he had something focused, once he had something that was very specific to his goals, to his needs, it was very easy to take that and, and make progress on it. Um, you know, why runners currently don't lift, there's a lot of reasons. I'm sure people in this room have some reasons why they might not do strength training. Um, the three big ones that I hear are endurance athletes don't need strength. Um, and we're going to talk about that. Um, I don't need to train my legs because I run, right? I don't, I don't have to train my legs because I run. I use my legs a lot, or I don't want my legs to be sore. And that's a great reason, and we're going to talk a, little, a lot about that. Um, and then I don't want to get big and muscle-bound. Obviously, that's going to slow me down, and we'll, we're going to touch on that a little bit. Uh, what you need to know is that the research actually supports strength training for runners. Over the past six or seven years, maybe even a little longer, they've really been kind of putting out all these studies on um, strength training for runners, strength training for endurance athletes. And what they're showing is, you know, guys who strength train had increased VO2 max. Okay, they had enhanced Hi, exercise Jay. economy. Right, so that means that they were more efficient when they went running. Um, they can maintain higher power outputs. They had enhanced anaerobic and lactate thresholds. They could work for a longer amount of time at a higher pace. And that's going to be really important when we start talking about strength training. The take home message is that runners need to train like athletes. You know, whenever I talk to someone, usually in the gym, or someone who wants to come in and meet with me, and I say, what do you do? They say, well, I'm a runner. It's like, you're not just a runner, you're an athlete. And you have to train like that. Your program has to reflect that. Everything from your marathon program, which Coach Bill is going to talk about writing, uh, to your strength training program, to your nutrition program, your recovery and your regeneration 
all that stuff is important. It has to kind of work together in order to make you better, especially when we're talking about training a significant <laughs> amount of time for something as, as grueling as a, as a marathon. Um, so if we take some of those, uh, those reasons why runners don't lift, we'll kind of break them down. Endurance athletes don't need strength. And uh, this is a huge misconception because, you know, when do people usually feel pain when we're talking about endurance athletes? And I don't want to say all the time, because obviously I get people that come to me and say, oh, it hurts, uh, you know, it hurts right when I start running or it hurts when I wake up in the morning. But most of the time people come and they say, you know, I feel pretty good until the six miles. Or, you know, it doesn't really hurt me until 30 minutes into the run. And, you know, why does that happen? Well, if we look at what happens later in the race, we start to lose the ability of our stress shortening cycle to, to add to our running, right? The stress shortening cycle is basically just a reflex response. So we put a muscle on, on a rapid stretch and our body will reflexively contract that muscle. So if we take running, for example, we hit the ground and as our hip comes underneath our body, our, uh, our plantar flexors, our, our gastroc and our soleus mainly are gonna be put on stretch and then they're gonna rapidly contract to push against the, against the ground to extend our ankle, extend our knee, extend our hip and propel us forward. As we start to get tired and fatigued later in the race, stretch shortening cycle can't contribute enough because we don't have the strength so we start to muscle things and when we muscle things that's usually when our mechanics start to go downhill and you can see this if you go out to the race and you stand halfway or you stand even towards the end and you see all the people shuffling they come in they're shuffling they're going really slow sometimes coach Bill and I will stand at the finish line and we just kind of look at each other and say like wow I can't believe this person's actually finishing uh, because it looks it looks that crazy um, you know, if we look at what happens when you shuffle, okay, when you when you lack strength, as you get into the later race, your mechanics change, you start muscling things, and you slow down. As you slow down, you shorten your stride length, okay? When we shorten our stride length, now we're not getting a full follow-through on our hips, and that means that our psoas isn't going to contribute as much to hip flexion. So a little bit of anatomy, the psoas is our only hip flexor muscle that actually comes up and attaches onto our spine attaches onto the, the transverse processes, the bodies and the, and the discs, the intervertebral discs of our lumbar vertebrae, and as well as maybe uh, the 12th thoracic vertebrae. Um, so when the, when the psoas can't contribute to hip flexion, now we have other muscles that are trying to work in because we're taking these short steps. So our TFL and our rectus femoris, which are two other hip flexors, they start to work a little bit harder. Um, the problem with those two muscles is that they play a result in what goes on at our knee. So if those muscles start to get tight because they're working a little more, we now have tissue tension, we have tightness and stiffness, and now we have pain, right? And that usually comes out and we say, man, yeah, my IT band is killing me. And sometimes that could be a problem with your program, you're doing too much, too quickly. Um, but a lot of times, you could deal with, you just don't have strength to maintain the mechanics that you need to finish the race. Um, another thing that happens when we start to get tired and fatigue and slow down is we start to usually get more vertical displacement with our running. And uh, what happens, obviously, what goes up must come down because Newton said so. So we're taking more, we're taking our steps and we're going a little more vertical, right? We're not getting the horizontal displacement that we need. The higher that we displace ourselves, the more force we have to absorb, right? Running is about three to five times our body weight. That's about the amount of force that we have to absorb. So the more vertical displacement you get, the higher you're going to be towards that, that higher number. And you can do the math on your own body weight. Um, another thing that happens as we start to slow down, if we don't have enough strength, is now we start out the race, we have that nice maybe four foot or mid foot strike, stride looks good, we're chugging along and everything looks great. But then what happens is we start to slow down, we start to get tired and now we turn that into a heel heel to toe type of strike. And every time we strike with that heel, we get a breaking. Okay, so we lock out the knee, we strike with the heel, and we actually break our force. And now we have this break and reaccelerate, break and reaccelerate with every step. Okay, and that puts a lot of jarring on our joints. And again, it goes back to now we have tightness, tissue tension, stress, and pain. Okay, so if the guy, you know, if you remember back to what the research supports, the guys who did the strength training, they could maintain higher power outputs. They had better economy, better exercise economy. They were more efficient, okay? So they could go out and they could run the marathon because they had the strength to do 